good evening to our participants in the far east may i now request our chairman chairman kcfr mr kran sagal to welcome the participants cpec and its impact on the region we are very blessed that the president of pakistan mr arif alvi will join us for the preliminary address and i thank him uh, for taking time out for this important event we are also grateful uh, to the his excellency the chinese ambassador who without hesitation when i called him immediately said he would participate and obviously he is not an ordinary uh, person uh, an ordinary human being because what he knows about cpec is uh, really something extraordinary we are also very lucky that we have with us uh, lieutenant general asim bajwa who was the chairman of the cpec authority now general asim bajwa other than his soldiering etc also spent a lot of time in balochistan and obviously most of cpec and down to gwadar goes to balochistan ladies and gentlemen it is a privilege for karachi council in conversations to host this webinar and this will be followed by other webinars on important subjects concerning pakistan and the region thank you very much ladies and gentlemen his excellency mr yao jing ambassador of people's republic of china chairman cpec authority lieutenant general asim salim bajwa sahab chairman karachi council on foreign relations mr ikram saigal assalam alaikum to all of you it's a very nice occasion uh, today to talk about the cpec sometimes there are there is a propaganda against a number of issues but i must uh, point out to the vision of the chinese leadership regarding belt and road initiative as far as that is important throughout the region throughout in the world always peace was related to the fact that there were trade routes we war always disrupted trade routes so uh, china and pakistan had the there's the it was the great silk road which was uh, reestablished through the karokoram highway as long as there is movement of goods there is prosperity there is trade between regions if there is one region in that uh, one country in that region which is more economically prosperous it is able it is able to import goods from less prosperous regions and therefore the all the belt and road initiative which china the government of china and the people's republic of china has initiated uh, uh, throughout the southeast asia as well as towards central asia and then through pakistan the cpec corridor is very is very important we uh, i am glad to uh, summarize the fact that we have made a lot of progress on on the cpec it's a 62 billion dollar um, uh, ultimately a project which will keep on expanding as prosperity increases and as the needs for communication through rail through fiber through road through energy through pipelines and all kinds of trade as those routes uh, become more popularized we will have to keep on improving upon them in increasing that infrastructure and increasing the reach of the same um, in my context i also believe that as peace returns to afghanistan it is very important that trade takes place from gwadar also to afghanistan and pakistan government has ensured the fact that the afghan transit trade will pick up from gwadar and has started from gwadar and i think uh, as peace progresses in afghanistan the contribution of pakistan and china to the rebuilding of afghanistan cpec will be an important part uh, it we in the, in the cpec corridor there are 20 uh, about 19 projects which have been completed there are about 28 which are in during in the phases of implementation there are 41 in the pipeline and this will keep on uh, getting bigger and bigger the multan sakhar expressway for example of 392 kilometers is completed the kk tavelia thakot uh, ex, uh, is has been completed in march 2020 the ml1 for which i was in uh, in beijing in march and we communicated with his excellency president xi on ml1 and uh, what does pakistan think it has uh, it uh, it needs and the ml project is going ml1 project which is the rail link between karachi and peshawar is going to be inaugurated soon the optic cable 
from Khunjarab to Islamabad has been made, but from uh, Karachi, from Islamabad to Karachi and from Islamabad to Gwadar is under the process. Gwadar is the crown jewel also of the CPEC corridor because it links the uh, waters to the Chinese north western regions uh, the, uh, as well as to Central Asia. So in Gwadar, the East Bay Expressway uh, is a good project which, and the Gwadar International Airport, all these to link to the world in different ways. And uh, for as far as energy is concerned, the 300 megawatt coal fired plant in Gwadar, as well as desalination. We need the, uh, the people of Gwadar and as Gwadar expands, as there are industries set up, as there are export industries set up, as the special economic zone in Gwadar uh, becomes prosperous and people start investing, we need des a desalination plant. So I'm glad that 1.2 million gallons per day desalination plant is also in the process. So I, I think uh, there are, in, as far as the CPEC corridor is concerned, initially Pakistan needed energy, focus on energy, and there are nine pro proje projects which are operational with 5,320 5, megawatts of energy through, the, through them. Three are still under, under construction. In the wake of the coronavirus, I think that there are several changes, several changes. The first is that the, econo the global economy is under kind of a recession. And uh, this is definitely is a sure tendency. And the China, that we are working hard to revive our economy. And I believe the Prime Minister of Pakistan and the government of Pakistan also giving a lot of uh, efforts for the revival of the economy. So the CPAC, under the, this kind of background, we are also trying to adapt, adapt that uh, the government policy or that uh, your uh, economic development uh, requirements. For example, that just now that the chairman's chairman CPAC authority mentioned that several kind of several projects, especially in the area of uh, construction, has been approved and started. For example, that uh, our hydropower stations in both Kohara and as a part time, and uh, also that right now we are engaged in a very uh, close coordination and. Uh, discussion about the implementation of the mainline railway project. The BRI changes the dynamics, the geopolitical dynamics of the whole world. Now you can go from Shanghai to Paris by road and rail in 15 days, but it takes you 45 days by sea uh, to take something. Now, Obviously, number one. Number two, there can be no interdiction. The way the, uh, the interdiction could be possible in the seas. So that is a great thing. The other thing which, uh, uh, let me say, is of great importance to Pakistan and the region is the development where Shah Bahar has been taken over in the sense of, at least the development of Shah Bahar in Iran has been now with the Chinese. And also the energy project the Chinese have taken CPEC is a transformational project. It is a game changer for Pakistan. I would hear this before I assume the charge of Chairman CPEC authority, but now as I come here and see the potential and depth of uh, the work that needs to be done and which will bear fruit in coming time, now I, I have become a firm believer that this term was coined with a lot of depth and thinking. So first of all, let me just tell you that the environment in the region is improving by the day and Pakistan is becoming uh, in the center of all this development of peace and prosperity becoming visible in our lifetime. So we have to get ready now to take full advantage of this. Uh, with that, let me also assure you the commitment of the two leaderships, both uh, in China and in Pakistan. I was just uh, telling somebody yesterday how after my induction into this position, the prime minister with so much of passion and commitment uh, directed me 
to take CPEC forward and approach him directly in case there was any hitch. And myself and His Excellency, uh, Mr. Yao, uh, we, we've been talking, we've been working together, and we've been planning only to take it forward. Now, let me quickly recap because the time is less. CPEC was planned in three phases. Phase one, which was the early harvest and phase one, short-term project, was basically meant to fill the gaps in our infrastructure, both in communication and energy. Just now that the chairman CPEC authority had uh, given a very, I should say, detailed deliberation about the CPEC and its stages and its uh, future directions. I will focus on uh, basically is in the wake of this coronavirus. Uh, since right now that uh, we have been experiencing the pandemic or that this outbreak of the epidemic for the past almost six months. And uh, we appreciate the Chinese government and the people appreciate a lot for the solidarity support and the assistance from the Pakistani government and the people when China was, uh, was suffering from the uh, outbreak. As we bring in the Chinese here under a framework, so they will start coming and filling the gaps of infrastructure, of cellular coverages, of transportation, of power shortages like there are in AJK and Gilgit Baltistan. We are identifying tourist zones where we can lease out land for building of uh, hotels and restaurants and all. So uh, these were the priority areas. We are picking up clusters of NAVTEC and TEFTA run technical institutes and working with the Chinese, His Excellency is present here. They have a 1 billion grant project. We want to pick up those clusters and upgrade and capacity build of those technical institutes so that we can move from very basic and manual technical skills to robotics, etc. So that once we have the industry relocated from China, we should have the workforce here which can, which can go and uh, work in those industries. Uh, similarly, let me tell you, uh, for all those who are in Karachi, because I know there is a lot of interest, we are working with the Chinese companies to come and invest in the port infrastructure, because we know KPT, Port Kasim have a lot of potential, but it is underutilized because there is a lot of work which needs to be done. Similarly, there are other ports which need to be developed, and KT Bandar is one port which now Sindh has proposed to us for development. This is, I think, one of the adaptation of the CPAC that to, co uh, to cooperate with the Pakistani government to build the momentum for the economic revival and, the econo and economic activities. Uh, there is also, of course, the long-term uh, or relatively mid-term cooperation under the CPAC and the general body uh, also mentioned that, and that is our industrial cooperation, agricultural cooperation, and uh, the science and the technology, including other sectors like the tourism and uh, water resources management. All these, I think, they, uh, are very important. And the, I think uh, we are in close collab collaboration with uh, the various departments and the ministries uh, of the of the Pakistani government to study this because uh, that the fundamental of an economy is based on the manufacturing and the production. And we are going to uh, establish a business forum. Basically, is we are going to help build the manufacturing capacities and the production uh, capacities of the Pakistani exporters, exporters. As a result, you can see a good tendency, although that we are all suffering from this pandemic, but a good si uh, sign of increased FDI still coming from China to Pakistan in a, in a very good The Diamir Basha Dam uh, is also 
in the process of uh, being built and it will open up 16,000 jobs and it will be 4,500 megawatts as far as energy is concerned and it will store about 6.4 million acre feet. After Tarbela and Mangla in Pakistan's history, the Amir Basha is the biggest water storage dam. The crisis as far as water is concerned, Pakistan is aware of that. Pakistan is looking for conservation of water. At the same time, Pakistan wants to be able to hold uh, its water to, so, so that it is more efficiently utilized. So I think the Amir Basha in that way is very important. As things keep on improving, we are, uh, we are looking at exports. We are looking at our own communication through the CPEC corridor. Trade within Pakistan has also increased. Of course, tourism uh, issue has been mentioned uh, by Lieutenant General uh, Bajwa also. Tourism, because of the COVID-19 uh, situation, tourism has had a setback. Everything has had a setback, except for the fact that Pakistan went into an intermittent and a calculated and a smart lockdown. The result was that our industrial sec sector was not overburdened by uh, uh, lockdowns and uh, out of work people. So the industrial sector has been producing, the exports have been almost online. Uh, and I think Pakistan has recovered well and we, we are uh, impressed by the fact that the Chinese government handled and I was, I went to China during the peak of the COVID-19 situation. And I was very impressed by the way they handled it. And they also guided us, guided us. And we also had very good processes on the ground prevention, usage of masks and social distancing were probably the reasons why Pakistan has gone uh, now over the curve and the cases in Pakistan have been reducing. This shows good cooperation between Pakistan and the People's Republic of China. In, in, uh, there, there were two delegations which came in also of doctors which, who came into, into Pakistan. They guided us. We also learned, experienced the fact that uh, how to be able to handle this new disease. And we are better at handling it today. So all these things are definitely related to communication. Communication uh, is uh, 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 iconic in the sense that it is mental, it is through uh, electronic means as well as through transport and through the corridor. So there are a lot of projects in Pakistan which are going on. Uh, this project by CPEC itself will enhance a lot of trade development in Pakistan. So in the, initially we were looking at energy. We are also looking at reduction of poverty. So as the special economic zones come up, as the tax haven, which have been created in Gwadar and other places along the corridor, as, the, as these tax haven uh, find roots and find their ground, there will be a lot of uh, uh, work for Pakistani people itself and lift people out of poverty. The construction sector, which has been opened up by this government, will also play, uh, uh, play a big role in fact, in, uh, in uh, reducing poverty. And we have been learning from our friends. We have been focusing on uh, elevation, improvement of health, improvement in education, and therefore, through the same processes, the reduction of poverty. So I think uh, it's an outstanding situation which uh, People's Republic of China visualized. There have been criticism, there has been criticism that it, it overburdens our economy. Uh, and I assure you, and I assure participants that it does not overburden our economy, but it improves the ability of, uh, 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 for, for Pakistani, pe for, for people of Pakistan to improve their economy. So it doesn't overburden. We should be able to pay back the loans which are there. Most of them are uh, the loans which are uh, on a commercial basis between private entities in China and private entities in Pakistan. And as these projects come to fruition, they will be themselves be able to pay back all whatever loans we incur. So I think uh, this is an example of good cooperation between countries which is focused on development, which is not focused on any kind of exploitation, which is focused on the needs of different countries. And we have um, uh, progressed tremendously on the CPEC corridor. During this period, and I think that the CPEC is also faced with uh, some kind of challenges. It's basically, I think that there are some kind of uh, development related to the international and the regional situations. Uh, situations Right now, because of this COVID-19, you know, internationally, there are a lot of development of uh, 
unilateralism, and also that there are a lot of uh, development of protectionism. But the fundamental concept of the CPAC is a cooperation. It's, it is a platform, first, of, of course, it's a platform between China and Pakistan. But we are also building the regional aspect or the regional opportunities for the CPAC to offer to the regional countries, to the, for example, Central Asia, Afghanistan, as well as other countries. Four areas that we are focusing. Number one is mass industrialization through uh, special economic zones. There are a total of nine zones which were to be built, and we are working on three prioritized zones. Prioritized zone, one in Rashakai, one in Faisalabad, and one in Dhabiji next to Karachi. We are working with the Ministry of Science and Technology in order to produce from lithium batteries to uh, solar panels to pharmaceuticals and to chemicals, etc. So we are working with them as well. So there is a huge potential in the IT sector again in science and technology because these are the job provider industries. And as we all know, that service industry is one area where we can have a lot of potential. Finally, uh, we, we are taking CPAC into uh, tourism sector. One area where we have a lot of potential, but we are suffering because of lack of system and because of lack of infrastructure. CPAC is open and it is open for all. However, that's because uh, this kind of uh, anti-globalization trends, you can see that the CPAC is under kind of suspicion, criticism, or it's even a kind of attacks. But I think that the fundamental task for China and Pakistan is that we do our best to build it as a regional cooperation, if possible, an international cooperation platform for all. For all. Through our efforts, we will keep our inclusiveness and also openness for all. Of course, that this is a platform, first of all, is for the Chinese and Pakistani uh, businessmen and entrepreneurs. I think that I appreciate a lot the leaders of Pakistan, like the President uh, RV, Prime Minister Imran Khan, and also the ministers and in particular the CPAC authority for your devotion and the efforts to move forward with the CPAC. CPAC is becoming more and more comprehensive. It will move from the infrastructure towards towards the uh, business to business sector. It will move from the uh, uh, inf uh, infrastructure and the economic sectors to the social sectors. It will move from the government to government cooperation towards the people to people cooperation. So as far as the Chinese government and the Chinese business circles are concerned, we are very much devoted and committed towards the, this project. And we really want to, by collaborating with the Pakistani counterparts, that to build it as an example of open, inclusive, and beneficiary project for all. Thank you. At the same time, looking at what the situation is like today, uh, I believe that the cooperation we have initiated uh, between the peoples of these two countries on IT is very important because the new infrastructure highway is also IT, where actual goods are moving, of course. Uh, at the same time, the, uh, the ability of software, the ability of knowledge to be moved through the, uh, through the air is also important. And we have a youth, we are working very hard to bring them up to a standard to be able to work on software, export software, and we are in, in a position uh, to be able to uh, take help from the People's Republic of China in this regard and improve those sectors. So, thank you. I am very hopeful as far as the CPEC corridor is, corridors also become, uh, uh, ensure the fact that there is peace within the region. And those countries which, uh, which ignore the fact that communication in every form improves uh, improves peace 
then they go towards friction and we are facing it, uh, on our borders we are facing a belligerent uh, india uh, we are facing a situation in kashmir and i and i uh, we are cognizant of that uh, there are uh, there are uh, uh, situation in balochistan where there is intrigue and there is interference in trying to discourage cpec uh, cpec work uh, but we are aware of it and we are in good political communication with our friends in china and i think we would be able to overcome so thank you ladies and gentlemen this is a very important meeting i thank the karachi council of foreign relations and i thank all the participants for exchanging their views and uh, bringing this important um, uh, highlighting this important uh, china pakistan economic corridor thank you very much mr president uh, we are going to have more uh, things or important things that we're going to discuss in webinars unfortunately today uh, in pakistan the uh, in probably most of the world the importance of webinars in particularly in this pandemic situation is not really realized we must must we have to reach out we have to reach out with all our information we must take away misconceptions we must uh, do a lot of things so uh, i take this occasion to request you that in the future we'll reach out to you both as the president of pakistan and as a member of the karachi council for foreign relations to participate in important subjects i must mention here that despite the political differences of all the political parties the ppp during that time contributed towards china pakistan economic corridor the pmln did a lot of work towards the pakistan economic corridor and obviously pti has done well and obviously it has now been institutionalized by making the cpec authority which was much needed because everything was at sixes and sevens and there was no real ownership as to uh, the thing and i'm sure general bajwa is going to do much more thank you mr president uh, it is my privilege uh, to extend my thanks to you uh, i would like to see a few words before you uh, leave and uh, first of all you know we are really grateful to you because you have taken time out for this important seminar and you have said some things which are very important for pakistan at this juncture particularly at this critical situation i cannot thank uh, enough i must thank uh, his excellency he just reached out immediately in the telephone call it did not take him even 10 seconds to say yes to it and i and similarly uh, general asim bajwa immediately said yes to it i must also uh, thank the take this occasion thank the finance uh, the foreign minister where without sham mohammed qureshi intervening this uh, webinar would not have been possible because he intervened and made sure that this webinar take place